This is the 2023 Kia Carnival. While it competes with minivans such as the Honda Odyssey, the Chrysler Pacifica, and the Toyota Sienna, it's not really listed as a minivan. It's listed as a multi-purpose vehicle, but I guess that means you could call it a minivan if you wanted to. So in today's Vehicle Visionary video, we're going to try to answer the question, is it the ultimate road trip vehicle? Should I say the ultimate multi-purpose road trip vehicle? Well, let's take a look at what we have. It does have very distinctive styling. While it does drive like a minivan, maybe that's a good thing because at least you'll feel like you're in a minivan if that's what you want. But the thing that it really steps out to me here that kind of jumps off the front end, the distinctive styling of the daytime running lights working their way over a slight angle here going up, coming across, and then a nice sharp drop. Almost would have looked really nice if they had done that all the way across instead of stopping it here at the front grille. But then again, it might look like an EV if they did that. And maybe that's not what Kia wanted in that respect. The tiger nose grille looking nice, looking, well, sporty, but still kind of an aggressive look at the same time. And when it comes down to the fog lights down here, you've got the nice brushed aluminum, a very nice kind of sporty look here with the front spoiler and just an overall nice looking front end with the lines and everything we have here. And I don't know if you can see the daylight there. I think you can. You do have the active air curtains right here to help improve aerodynamics because obviously a larger vehicle like this tends to have the aerodynamics of a brick. Not necessarily as much here as with some other vehicles, but you do have a very distinctive looking front end from the A pillars forward. It has, well, somewhat of a squared off look, almost looks a little bit like a Kia Soul, but still has some nice distinctive lines to it to give it a sporty look as far as how the nose slopes down right here. And we're gonna see the body color on the side view mirrors, at least up here. Turn signal indicators are built in, and then we'll have the gloss black down here on the bottom. Now, I don't know that that's the best thing there, because gloss black is not known for holding up very well to rock chips and things like that. We'll go up here, gonna have the dual color of sorts with the brushed aluminum and body color door handles on the door here for the front and on the sliding side doors. Obviously you can hit the buttons right here to lock and unlock everything if you want to. And really a nice setup here at the Chicago Auto Show to show you how much space is up there, what you can put with those roof rails and the crossbars that are available. And ultimately a nice look. Now kind of an interesting contrast here. So you're gonna have the gloss black and then the brushed aluminum right here. What do you think about that? Tell me down in the comments section. And if any of these car makers with vehicles, whether it's a minivan or whatever you wanna call it, if you could hide this area away right here, that would be really interesting to see how that would work. Probably make the price of the vehicle go up, I know, but I'm sure you'd be okay. And then taking a look back here, this looks like Kia right here as far as the LED taillights go, the accent lighting working its way. I do like how they did it all the way across right here. That definitely looks nice. Pretty sporty looking for sure. A very clean rear here as you don't see any exhaust back here, although obviously you do have exhaust pipes, but they're hidden away neatly underneath the vehicle. The Carnival logo and the Kia logo finishing things off nicely. And kudos to Kia. They hid away the rear window wiper within the rear roof spoiler right here. So glad to see that. A little bit of that gloss black here that almost from a distance would make it look like this rear window works its way all the way back but that is gloss black trim. Much like one of its competitors, the Honda Odyssey, this is only available with front wheel drive. It does make 290 horsepower, 262 foot-pounds of torque, made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. This is a 3.5 liter V6. You can see the V6 logo right there. And MPG is, well, I wouldn't say too terribly bad. 19 city and 26 out on the highway. Not too bad for a vehicle that, well, kind of has brick-like aerodynamics. And much like its competitors, it tows 3,500 pounds, which is pretty much around that same range for everybody else. 45.2 to 145.1 cubic feet of cargo capacity. And I tell you what, it's very versatile back here. As you can see, you have these rear seats that do obviously fold flat, but you can also see that you can move 
these seats on their tracks back and forth, at least this middle seat right here, kind of get a look at the tracks right there up front. A very versatile interior in a multitude of ways. I'll have to move that out of the way in just a second, but we'll take a look at what's back here before we do that. Obviously, you're gonna have a couple of options for connectivity, which I think is a really good thing. Kind of nice to see the two different sources there, the power outlet and the 12 volt. A little bit of space back here. No vacuum cleaner like the Honda used to have with the Honda Vac, but not necessarily a big deal. Still quite a bit going on back here. And one thing I do want to show you real quick. If you say to yourself, that door is way too high for me, I can't reach that. Here's how you're going to reset that. You're going to pull this down and you're going to hold this button until you hear the beeps. So we'll listen for the beeps. Now, we're gonna close that down for you real quick. Well, let's do a take two on that. We're gonna close that down for you. Maybe not real quick, but we're gonna do it anyway. And then I'll show you that when I open it back up, it opens to the height where I just set it. Not an unusual feature, but just so you know what's there in case you run into that and say to yourself, yeah, I wanna change the height of the rear door on my Kia Carnival. Okay, let's see if I can do this one-handed. It is so easy to do, probably the easiest of any vehicle I've done. A little bit heavy with that larger seat there, but you can see how you do this right here as far as all of that goes. And the good thing about this area right here where you're gonna stow the seats away when they're not in the upright position is that you can also use that for any kind of storage, whatever you want to put down there, maybe something that's taller than what the interior allows to stand straight up on the regular area of the floor right there. Pretty, pretty nice setup, that's for sure. So here's how we're going to put the seats back down. We're going to pull on that strap, and then all you have to do is pull right here. It's a little hard to do one-handed, but let's see if I can do it. There we go. Kind of hard to do one-handed. It'd be a much more fluid and smooth motion if I wasn't trying to do that one-handed. All right, we're gonna have the power sliding side door, obviously, as you can imagine. And here's the thing. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. It's very difficult to do, but two-handed, no problem. But you're gonna pull up on that lever. That's how you move this seat back and forth on the tracks. And then you can also move these seats, the outboard seats, on their tracks as well. All the seats are removable, by the way, but let's see if I can do this one-handed. There we go, and kind of show you how that works right there, just so you can see. And then we're gonna hop inside and see what the leg room is like. I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not, but let's see if I can. So there we go, pretty easy to do. So obviously you have some options here as far as rear seating leg room goes. I mean, if somebody was short enough, I guess they could leave the seat right there, but you can see where the other seat is here. Kind of more of a conventional space right here than what we have there. But there is a lot of flexibility for leg room. I would like to have a little bit more space for myself back here, but I could probably be okay for a little while. And something you won't see with the Odyssey. There you go. You've got two different sunroofs, not panoramic, but you have a front and a rear and we can also take a look here as far as what we have, USB connectivity, a couple of cup holders right there. Plenty of space for rear seat passengers back here. They've got the privacy shade if they wanna put that up. And then you're obviously gonna have the same thing on those side doors with the power windows on each door. One thing I will say here, depending on where the front seat is, if you pull this seat all the way up, it's hard to get your hand down in there. Just something I noticed, at least for me personally, but in case you're curious, well, there you go. And you can see some of the options that we have here. Let me hit the button right here to close the door. But you can see the option right here. Obviously, I can't show you anything on the screens right now because I don't have the remote to turn anything on, but you can see the rear entertainment package right here. Obviously, gonna have the controls for all of that. Controls for the air conditioning. Everybody has their own air conditioning vent built into the roof right there. Really probably a good location for that. And in the event that you want to exercise 290 horsepower and drive spiritedly, well, there's the oh crap handles for your passengers to grab onto. I do like the fact that when it comes to getting in and out, even though we don't have a lot of space to get down to the ground, at least there is something for sure-footedness to grab onto right there. And then we'll take a look at what we have here. Gloss black, gonna have the rear cup holders right there and the power outlet right there, as well as the 12 volt 
quite a bit going on back here. A little bit of space in here for storage, whatever anybody in the rear seat area wants to put in, and even some rear seat storage options as well. And if you're not familiar with the Carnival and you're saying to yourself, well, wow, I can't believe there's no USB ports. That's because they're located right here within the seat, on the side of the seats right here. And if somebody says to themselves, this seat is not where I want it to be, as far as the passenger goes over here, well, you can move that up. Or maybe play pranks on your brothers and sisters when they're sitting in the front seat, but I didn't say that, did I? And taking a look in through the passenger side door, nice space here, a lot of gloss black. So if you're a fan of gloss black, you should be very happy. Soft touch materials right there. You can put your arm on that and good size door bins for the front passengers and power seats for the passenger here. So obviously that means you're gonna have power seats for the driver as well. And very nice touch with the trim that we have right here. It looks very interesting, kind of an interesting pattern and design there. And then an almost seamless look for the air conditioning vents. And then you work your way across the dashboard. You can only tell where those are based on the fact that you have the adjustments right there. And then we'll work our way across. Actually, let's take a look into the gloveless glove box. There's never any gloves in there. They should rename this thing to something else other than a glove box. At least that's my thought on the matter. Now, let's take a look here at what we have with our air conditioning controls. Everything here pretty self-explanatory. Hey, good news though, if you don't like the push button shifters, you don't have that here cup holders built in, a lot more of that gloss black, quite a bit going on here. And then we're gonna have our wireless charging pad there and a lot of space within the center console right there, even a little bit of additional space here in the front. And that classic look from Kia, as far as almost a seamless look between the digital instrument cluster and the infotainment screen. But unfortunately, again, since we're here at the Chicago Auto Show, it's a little hard to show you without the remote. And taking a look in through the driver's side door, you know what all is here. I don't have to tell you what it's all about, but you do have two different settings for seat memory. Here are the controls for some of your safety features, all that good stuff. It's a manually adjustable tilt and telescopic adjustable steering wheel. You just drop the lever right there and you're good to go as far as adjusting that. And then we'll take a look as best as we can at the digital instrument cluster, your steering wheel mounted controls, maybe a little too much gloss black. I don't know. Tell me what you think about that because that's going to fingerprint up quite a bit. But overall, a very nice look here. Even up here on the upper console, you've got the controls for the sunroof, functionality there and then your map lights the reading lights but overall and overall very clean look here that's for sure as far as the interior goes spacious comfortable it has a comfortable ride quality i mean drive like a minivan it just in other words kind of a big turning radius and then just the overall way it just feels kind of a large vehicle not a bad thing it's just typical of a minivan so tell me what you think down in the comment section is the 2023 kia carnival the ultimate road trip dare i say it minivan but we'll just stick with that or multi-purpose vehicle tell me what your answer is and tell me why you answered the way that you did i appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle if you enjoyed this video and want to check out other videos on vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.